here to work on that. Yeah, I think that'll be the end
Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to this time of worship on All Saints Sunday. Welcome especially to our guests and visitors who are here with us in the sanctuary and to all who are watching at home via our live stream. Uh, today is a day when we celebrate our connection to the uh, body of Christ, the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us in the faith. Um, later in the service, we'll have an opportunity to lift up in prayer the names of those within our congregation who have passed away this year, and you'll have an opportunity as well to name aloud or in the silence of your hearts loved ones who have, have died this year. As part of our celebration of our connection to the body of Christ, the great cloud of witnesses, we're delighted today to welcome five confirmands uh, into baptized and confirmed membership here at Trinity to celebrate their inclusion in our body and participation in the larger church. Uh, we'll do that early on in the service and uh, it's a great day of celebration in that regard. Thank you to everybody who has supported them along their faith journey. You'll see their names and some brief bios listed in the bulletin and congratulate them, send them a card, uh, encourage them in their faith. I am excited to announce that at length, our long-awaited video equipment has arrived. We have scheduled the installation of our new cameras, our new video uh, board this coming week. You'll see some changes here in the sanctuary, therefore, and then, of course, any that are watching at home, look over the next couple of weeks for changes to our stream. They should be rather dramatic, I expect, uh, as we install a couple of uh, pan, tilt, zoom cameras in here and a whole new control system for that equipment. Give us a week or so to get trained on it, however. Uh, the installation should happen early this week, but uh, it's gonna take a little while, I think, to get us all up to speed in the use of it. But thank you again to everybody who contributed to this project. We are very uh, excited to see it finally come to fruition. My apologies to anyone who tried to register for today's service via our website, and when you went to the website, you got a big red screen instead. We have learned, uh, starting about Thursday, we discovered that we have apparently been subject to a phishing attack, and uh, we have our IT team, uh, the, the group that we hire to help us with the website is on it. They've been working on it since Thursday, and we trust that in the next day or so, it will all be back up and running, and everything will be back to usual, we hope. But uh, my apologies if you did try to register for today and, and were uh, not quite successful in doing that. We're glad to be able to accommodate everyone just the same. The newsletter for the month is available. Uh, you're welcome to pick up a hard copy here on your way out if you wish. As usual, it will be on the website again as soon as that site is back up and running. And then hard copies will be mailed, of course, as usual, to all of our homebound folks or those who cannot access it electronically. It'll start, uh, they'll go out tomorrow. Finally, for elementary age youth, families with elementary age kids, November 15th, we are looking forward once again to doing our Bible presentation here in the service, so please mark your calendars for that, and if you have any questions about it, do be in touch with Pastor Arlen. Again, that's going to be November 15th when we'll do that Bible presentation. Those are the announcements that I've got this morning. Are there any others to lift up for the good of the community? All right, seeing none, I wish each and every one of us a blessed worship celebration. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear the prelude, and I invite the confirmands to process forward.
Please rise as you are able and join me for the congregational litany as it is found in the front of the worship bulletin. We will speak Psalm 46 responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite the confirmands and their parents to come forward. So we'll have one family stand um, kind of right in front of the there, another family, and then we've got spots for two families up here and one that's kind of right in front of the steps there. Okay. I think everybody, make sure everybody can still be seen in the, <laughs> in the camera side here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I present today Dylan Fisher, Landon Berman, Owen Deal, Teresa Lunderman, and Ty Nelson who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister and these brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ, amen. Invite the congregation to rise as you are able and join the confirmands as they make public profession of their faith. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? 
I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, I will be speaking directly to each of the confirmands. Um, I will ask, one, when I get to each uh, confirmand, I will ask one of the parents to come and grab the stole that has their name and the um, one that the name tag has been slipped, uh, we know that one will go to, and then I will um, instruct us in our affirmation. So beginning with Landon. Landon, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the examples of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Owen, if one of you, Travis or Monica, want to grab the. Owen, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Dylan. Dylan, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Teresa. Teresa, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And Ty. Ty, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, 
to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Now, people of God, friends, extended family, those gathered with us, do you promise to support this sister and these brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Dylan, Landon, Owen, Teresa, and Ty, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Confirm their faith, guide their life, empower them in their serving, give them patience in suffering, and bring them to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice with the sister and these brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And as uh, you might be able to see a little closer the stoles, uh, thank you to uh, those that are in the sewing uh, group, the ladies that have helped put them together. On one side, it has symbols of the um, baptism, a dove, and uh, the name Trinity Lutheran Church, and on the other side, it has interests of theirs that reflect their personalities. And so we thank uh, those that were able to participate and provide in providing those for the confirmands. We also have the book, When Lightning Struck, which is a little novel of Martin Luther's story and a certificate commemorating this day. And so let us give a round of applause for these newly baptized into the church. So at this time, you may um, return to your seats. The books and certificates are in uh, alphabetical um, order and everything. And so if uh, you want to follow that way. Our service continues with the reading of the lessons. The first reading for this morning is taken from Joshua chapter 3. The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, by this you shall know that among you is the living God who without fail will drive out from before you all the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergashites, the Amorites, and the Jabakas. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you in the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out 
from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Jerotham, while those flowing toward the Sea of Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all Israel were crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. Word of God, word of life. The second reading for this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us that we would be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. What he has revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to stand as you are able to for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, 
and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the house. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We'd like to welcome the young people that are watching via the live stream and all the young people gathered here today. I want you to think about a time, maybe on the playground or maybe with your siblings at home, you had played a game where you could only step on certain objects or certain things because the other items were going to be lava or if you stepped on them, you might get bitten by something or something bad might happen. So you have to kind of play a little uh, hopscotch type thing around, uh, utilizing maybe stones or some other object. Or perhaps you played a game where you had to cross over some sort of a, a waterway or something to get from point A to point B and you had to create that path for it. I also want you to think about those times now you've been in retail stores or other places and you've seen the different stickers on the floor, the six feet apart distancing, and you have to step on those as you're making your way through the aisles. That is a, a unique perspective, and I encourage you now to think about that this week as you go about your days, because in our lives, those stepping stones might represent how you are stepping out, entering a new grade, entering a new environment, and sometimes we might find ourselves, as much as we want to take that next step, we are standing still. Imagine standing in the grocery line and afraid to take the next steps to get closer to the grocery checkout. You might be there for a while. Or if you're trying to cross over something to get to a friend and you just can't take that next step, you might find yourself stuck. In our lives, we sometimes have that, but the good news is, is God gives us sometimes helpers to get us through to the next step. And so this week, as you take steps various places, know that God is guiding you on those steps. God is loving you through it all, and God is present with each one of us. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the small steps that you guide us through, the small steps of encouragement that we must take sometimes in our day-to-day -day lives. Be with all of the young people and all of us this week as we take our steps throughout our day, uh, getting up in the morning, going through our tasks at school or work or at home, and remind us that you are with us, that you love us through each and every moment. Oh Lord, we love you and we lift this up to you in your holy, precious name. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. For those that might have ventured to the start of the Mississippi River in Minnesota, it's a unique experience and I was able to take that experience on when I was probably preteen age when our family took a vacation that first time that I went there, I was a bit scared to, for whatever reason, I just wasn't into wearing shorts or sandals and that, so I was a little bit hesitant as I tried to roll my pant legs up, take my socks off, and enter in and step across some of the stones, getting my feet a little bit wet. Now it won't faze me, but I remember that particular experience as I ventured out. And we hear today in our text from Joshua, the people were about ready to enter the promised land. But in order to do so, they must cross the Jordan. But in order for that to take place on dry ground, they needed to have 12 leaders 
first take a step forward and put their foot in the water. Now we know that the Israelites had walked 40 years in the wilderness desert, and what would have happened had they, the leaders, stood at that water, stood at the Jordan, raging waters, overflowing, and they just looked at it and stood there. They might be there for another year, two, three years. They wouldn't get very far. God does a lot in our lives, but he does so as we enter in. For our confirmands, one of the first steps that they would have taken or would have been within their family would have been their parents, bringing them into baptism, entering into that dedication part, taking them to worship, teaching them the various teachers, instructors, mentors that they had in those early elementary years as they walked beginning their faith journey. And then as they took that larger step into confirmation itself and learned about the small catechism, the Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer, Ten Commandments, learned about Martin Luther and his journey of faith, learned about the Lutheran faith itself, and now confessed, affirmed the promises and baptism for themselves, a major stepping stone. And prior to our gathering today over the summer, I had them in their own way enter into this stepping out in faith formation as they were able to watch a video or be present out at Cohen's Gap and the lookout and what it would look like to step out God's creation amongst them, walking a wilderness path where there's sometimes some stumbling blocks, some rigid edges. Their faith formation is only continuing to begin and will continue to grow stronger. I appreciated the scripture verses that each one of them presented. They are, I believe, foundations that they can build upon. For Landon, the book of Hebrews, knowing that sometimes there's going to be pain and struggle that you must go through, but knowing that that is not the end, and that there is something greater that one can learn from sometimes those obstacles. For Owen, a scripture that came from the Old Testament book of Nahum that included some components of our psalm today regarding that the Lord is our refuge and strength and is present with us during times that might seem a bit uncertain. For Dylan, Philippians 4.13, a strong foundation for Paul that he could do anything through Christ, knowing that Christ was the one who would strengthen him. For Dylan and for others, Christ is our foundation. For Ty, the golden rule in the Gospel of Matthew, do unto others as you would have yourselves, do unto, do unto others as you would have them do unto you teaching about how to live in God's kingdom. And for Teresa, a psalm verse that she excitedly will recite, Psalm 118, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reminder that when we have those unfortunate times that we can still celebrate and rejoice. And today I encourage all of us on this All Saints Sunday to be reminded that we are all saints, not because we have done it all right. Many of us would definitely fall under the category and think about our sin, as Martin Luther did so much. But yet he reminded and was reminded about being a saint and a sinner together. And so we celebrate the joy of God's presence in our lives and through Christ's death and resurrection, the promise that is given to us promise of forgiveness, grace, and mercy. We hear Jesus speak to the disciples, if you continue in, com in my commands and my teachings, you will be set free. We are set free through Christ's death and resurrection, and each day we continually are able to be set free to take those steps to walk forth, knowing that God is with us. And as we do, 
Perhaps it will allow us at times when it's needed to be still, to know that God is with us, to know that we are not alone. I encourage the confirmants to look around at all who have gathered to help celebrate and to remember those that had walked with you during this journey, whether it was godparents or other sponsors, whether it was a mentor within the confirmation program or simply the community of faith here at Trinity. We walk together as the body of Christ, trusting that as we take a step forward into that water, that God will open up the pathway for us so that we can continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, continue to provide encouragement to support one another to receive this gift today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. God of protection, thank you for being present with us as we continue to seek a return to normal. Please keep the people on the front line safe. We are thankful for the doctors and nurses who provide healing to the sick 
and the firefighters and police officers, officers who are keeping us safe during these hard times. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining God, we thank you for your bountiful creation. Grant restoration to areas affected by wildfires, drought, hurricanes, or snow. Be with all who must work in the elements of nature and help us all to be mindful stewards of your creation. May we, see, may we see the cycles of life and your faithfulness displayed as we take note of this blessing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, we, play, we pray for strength for anyone grieving or in pain. Thank you for providing us with family and friends to comfort us during this time of great crisis. We especially lift up Brantley, Scott, Jim, Ray, Jennifer, Rachel, Dottie, Karina, Shirley, Christine, May, Kayla, Rose, Larry, Mary, Edie, Sherry, Linda, Peg, Tim, Cameron, Jim, Ron, Cheryl, Gillen, Ron, Jim, Becky, Bernice, Tanner, Bobby, Arno, Leland, Edith, Marlene, Anna, William, and Joanne. May they experience your peace, comfort, and healing touch. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of discernment, guide us in the right way and show us that we are worthy. Can you continue to protect and pour out your love to all the people in the world? May we remember that although we are different, you call us to treat everyone with love and respect. Fill those in leadership positions with wisdom to govern the people in a way that brings honor and glory to you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of ministry, we thank you for the opportunity to share our ministry gifts with those in our local community. Continue to bless all who are sharing their gifts of ministry during the pandemic. For our faith community of Trinity Lutheran, we lift up Janelle, Travis, Barkland, Brooklyn, and Isabella Barkman, Helen Barnes, James, Regina, Frank, Thomas, Michael, David, and May Barra, Benjamin Bowers, Brian, Britanna, and Carson Barrows, Jeffrey and Denise Barrows, Jean Bachman, Preston and Joanne Bellas, Ann Bender and Thomas, Marva, Thomas Jr., Dava Silo, and Geneva Berry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. As we celebrate our confirmants, standing out in faith through the affirmation of baptism rite, we also rejoice over those who now feast in your eternal presence, especially all who have died in the past year. Mary Betty Sanders, Mary Bittner, Raymond Wagner, Lillian Franklin, George Dansberger Jr., Gladys Carter, and all those we name aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive now the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved in God, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated to hear our postlude and the ushers will direct you out row by row.